this is just a good place to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good. Well, I tell y'all what, just go and read verses in chapter 6. Read verses 1, 2, and 3 for me. Read it. Chapter 6, 1, 2, and 3. Ready to read that so I can continue on. Ready to read. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Cheers to that verse. Now, what's the last statement I made before I said go to go read that? See, y'all back on the donut. <laughs> yeah, and, and it seems like the way some of them carry on and some of this stuff I see on Facebook, some of y'all really need this. Oh, y'all, y'all, what I just, did I just, did I just shock you? Did, did, did you not know when you put stuff on the World Wide Web, it goes to the whole world? Duh! So why you thinking you just sent Choo Choo your picture? Well, he sent it to 10 other fellas. Then they took it and then they posted it. They got it all in their phone. Doc, look at this right here. You seen this? Man, man, wow. That's right, Doc. That's right. And so for some reason, you, you've allowed the world to think, that's rich, Holy Ghost. I'm talking to me, young folk. Everybody say, I love, I love Pastor it. Roberts. Come on, now, why, I'm going to hit that while I'm here because my time running out. How do you think a young man gets a, a, a Bushmaster, AK-47, goes into school and just starts spraying? Yeah. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians. Oh, yeah. Something hit something. Yeah, some of y'all ain't gonna like it, but I don't care. See, the Lord ain't sent me here. That's what y'all had to understand for you to like me. If that happened, that's wonderful. But my job is to impart this word to you. And all the time, as a spiritual parent or as a natural parent, you got to tell your children something they don't want to hear. And the further they've gone in rebellion, the more they resist. But the only reason why we talk to y'all so much is because we love you. If we didn't love you, we wouldn't talk to you. See the Bible, everybody say the Bible. Is God speaking to me about me. The Bible is written to believers. See the Bible? It's not written to boo-boo them on the corner. All right. no, no. It's written to believers. That's right. Amen. So they can't, they're not supposed to really understand Amen. it. That's right. Yeah. 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 But when you assemble yourself and you sit up on a word like this, a rhyme of word, well, then God holds you responsible for what you hear and what you know. That's right. So now, this is a love letter from God the Father to his children. Amen. In this love letter, I don't have to wonder what my daddy thinks mm -hmm. because I already had the mind of my father. Amen. I, in this love letter, I don't have to wonder what my dad will or will not do for me. He's already written it down. Yeah. I know what displeases him. I, I know what grieves him. I know what causes him heartache and sorrow because he wrote himself down. Yeah. Then he presented himself to me. Now, every time, and we, we saw that last week when we talked about people rejecting the word, yeah. not just the vessel that carries the word, but the word. See, when the prophet came and said, well, God, they say they don't want you over them no more. They say they want a king, and, and I don't like that. God says to the prophet, well, what you crying for? What you mad for? He said, they didn't just reject you. They rejected me. Amen. But I told you, prophetically speaking, God allowed the prophet to feel what he felt. Yes, Amen. Why do you think what the Bible says when Jesus looked out over the sheep and he, and he started to weep and he saw the people as one that had, had sheep that had no shepherd and the Bible says and Jesus wept. His heart went out yeah. for where the people were. Yeah. See, Moon, we need to thank God for somebody who come in here who want to see your life change and not just want change out your pocket. So when, 
in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. For God so loved the world that he, his only begotten Son, which was the Word. Woo. So God so loved me so much that he gave me his Word. My God. Not only his word for me to hear, but his word so I can know, I can understand, I can see. And all through this, he tells me about how much he loves me. Not only how much he loves me, but how much he's invested in me. Because if you can remember when I first started talking to young folk, I told you, anybody who really loves you, they invest in you. Yeah. And most of the time, it's the people that's talking to you against your folks. See, we're on the first point. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. So that means, parents, we need to be in the Lord. Right. I stopped at verse 26 to tell the men, how can I wash and cleanse my family? I got 66 gallons of Mr. Clean. That's right. That's right. But if I don't know how to properly operate it, I can't clean nothing with That's it. Right, man. That's right. Instead of cleaning stuff, I can corrode some stuff, yeah. mix some stuff up. If I mix it wrong, it becomes toxic. Right. You ever notice, even though you can't take, even bleach and ammonia are two good cleaning agents, but you put them together, you're going to get a chemical reaction. Yeah. So that's just like people who think they got the word, know the word, and then they mix it with something else that they think is the word. Then we get this toxic gas that we can't smell, oh my God, oh my God. that burns our insides. Well, oh, I'm prophetic, dig. I'm telling y'all, I told y'all that during the conference. It's a whole, it's, man, I'm in a whole nother place. Amen. So you have to understand, when he starts talking to these young folk, he said, this one is with promise. The first one, and with promise. The promise is to live a long time. Yeah, yeah. I say, how we watch the television, and little dude say, I just, I just want to make it to 25. Man, let me tell you something. If you six in the first grade, seven in the second grade, let's say by the time you graduate from high school, you 18. 18 a freshman year in college, 19 sophomore, uh, 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 20 a junior, 21 by May. We, if you ain't in some kind of extensive hard program, we ought to be coming to see you walk across the stage. Yeah, right. So that means you 21. But your life expectancy is only 25. Doc, you just getting ready to start living. You mean tell me you only expect to live four more years? So when the Bible says honor your father and mother, they're not just talking about the people who birth you, they're talking about all adults. That's right. And news flash, news flash, let me help you with something. Uh, some of y'all gonna cross over into 21. When you hit 21, I'm still going to be the same age older than you now as I was when you turned 21. So we should never get on a first name basis. That's right. That's right. Come on, Doc. Help somebody. Keep it real. My God. Keep it real. We can't get that for me with one another because I'm still grown. That's right. And no matter how grown you get, I'm always going to be growner than you. And so that means for anyone, basically, all in authority. In, you can't run around cussing grown folk out. And how about you ain't none of my mama, you ain't none of my daddy. But they are someone's mother and father. So honor causes you to add longevity to your life. You see folk out here 90, 80 something years old, hardly no ailments, still living. You know back in the day they took care of a whole lot of and respected a whole lot of old folk. But nowadays y'all don't respect yourselves, let alone those people that are in authority. Amen. And I'm just talking to you because I love you. So he loved us so much to give us this word. Yeah. I'm running out of time, so I'm kind of like, well, okay, get over here to 10. 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 10 and 4? 4 and 10. 2 Corinthians 4 and 10? Now, back, back to this thing. How in the world can that boy just go in there and do that? Carlos, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. 
The Bible says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting or the benefit of what you meditate on may appear in all. Y'all got my scripture? All right, read four and three. Yeah, oh, I thought something else. Yeah, I done told you, man. Second Corinthians, I was there. One, one out there, one out there. You do that one more time. Ask him, I know. <laughs> 10 and 4. For the weapons. Wait, y'all got it? Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 and 4. Let's go verse 3 and 4. Yeah. All right, ready? Read. When you get verse of that word, then you can spit them out like that. Now, don't be messing me up all on TV, all on the internet, man. <laughs> Come on, you on the front row. You supposed to know what you're talking about. All right, come on, ready, read. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not common, but mighty through God to the pulling down strong. Keep reading. The casting down of imagination, and every high thing that is the shelf of this the knowledge of God, and bring it into captivity, and every house to the obedience of Christ. All right, let me show y'all what happened. You know, I, we got Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation at my house. So I know how intense it gets. Y'all be in there like this. Two things going on. One, you focus. You more focused now, probably than you ever been for in your life. If I get you to focus like that in school, you'll be a road scholar. I'm serious, man. You, <laughs> now, when the satanic engineer and psychologist put the game together, they knew the power of meditation. They knew and understood to the degree now, to, to the games are fo almost four dimensional. It's almost like you right there on the field, right, you, you could f get the new seats they got, you could feel the ball when they hit you. You meditate. You are in a virtual world. You are no longer sitting in the living room, the theater room, you on the field. Or you are in the battle. Nine times out of ten, write it down. I could be off. It don't have to be right because Doc said it. But when they get through investigating, they will find that that boy been playing these games where they do nothing but kill people all day long. So what happens? Why, why he in this virtual world, he's left where he is. Even though you sitting there in the living room, dining wherever, your bedroom, you left there. Mama said, did you take out the trash, huh? You gone. You right there in the room, but you gone. Now you in there playing a game, but all you do is pick jokers off. Doo, 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 doo. What's happening? Blood and guts all over the screen. Slowly. But for surely, you're being desensitized. Yeah. Now, the, psychiat the psychologist, boy, I like them glasses. I used to have some just like that. The, the, psychologist, the psychologist and the engineer that put that together, satanically speaking, they begin to pray over it. And they transferred the spirit of murder. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, the anointing of the power that was on Jesus was now in the cloth. The Bible says they took aprons from Paul's body and whoever they gave the aprons to or laid them on, whatever their condition was, the healing anointing that was in Paul's body was now in the material that he wore on his clothes. So I, my, my theory is proven because spirits can be transferred. 
How many of y'all get one of them good, good CDs from the church and it be so hot in the car when people get in the car, which they have stars standing up on? The anointing was transferred on the CD. And so the Bible said, we are not ignorant. Yeah, man, I'm in there. I used to teach this stuff real heavy. Hey, we are not ignorant to his devices. So now the devil done prayed on this stuff. And now, you, that's why on television, you ever notice? They're trying to desensitize you to so much stuff. Two men kissing and tongue. That change. But watch, if you see it enough on TV, when you see them in the mall and see them somewhere in public like this, it won't bother you because you've seen it so much. Yeah, that's right, Doc. That's right. Yeah. And so every time you revisit the place, some of the games are so detailed till you can stop it where you are, then come back where you are and go to the next level. So here's a child. He gets involved in one of these games. He ain't never stole nothing before in his life. But one of the character traits of one of the characters that he portrays in the game has a thief anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, you stealing. The spirit transferred of your character as a man thinks in his heart. So yeah, now he desensitized. He don't have a problem pulling the trigger and just watching it do what it does. All because what he's meditating on on a consistent basis. You got grown men. Can't even get a job. Their wife or whatever go work all day, come home, dude ain't been nowhere. Yeah. He's sitting there playing the video game like he 14 years old. Yeah. Him and all his buddies yeah. sitting around on your furniture. He ain't went and looked for a job. Matter of fact, he got so into the game when you left, he forgot he was supposed to go look for a job. Yeah. Didn't think about that you came back home. My God. So now some folks are going to say, Pastor, you're getting a little too deep. Well, it is what it is. And the Bible said we're not ignorant of his devices. So now we're not bringing them to church. So they can't hardly get the word of God. So they're spending more time in the devil's kingdom than they do in the kingdom of life. Yeah. And whatever you spend the most time doing, yeah. that's what you're going to become. Yeah. So that's how he's able to do that, because he's desensitized to murder. Amen. Now the spirit of violence is on him, the spirit of murder is on him, and, and you, you, your child going half crazy, you don't know why. And it's these games. Spirits transfer. I'm, I'm going to close. Mark chapter 5, I'm closing. We'll pick back up next week. Spirits transfer. That was a, a, a back in when I was young, when the video stuff first started, they had a game called Dungeons and Dragons. It came from a book. It, it, it really was like, thank you, it really was like for egg, what they call eggheads, eggheads are those people with those real super high IQs, and most people who don't like to read, they couldn't have got into this anyway, but once they shifted it to videos, then you can kind of get into it, but in Dungeons and Dragons, you start out in one level, and as you progress, yes, you, you probably remember, as you progress in the Dungeons and Dragons, you take on more characters, because as you move out through this, this, this virtual kingdom, uh, you need different skills. So you might have to go pick up this, a thief. You might have to get you a murderer. You might have to get you a sorcerer. 
See, but all these are characteristics. Just as you grow in the natural, as you grow in the game, you take it on these characteristics. Well, you, because cause your mind is innocent, and the devil knows this, the, the enemy and his whole crowd. See, this, this satanic thing, man, I know I'm going to get, see, like last week when I, when I went to doing what I did, all last week I was hurting in my mouth. What happened? The devil hit me in the mouth. Well, for putting out this kind of truth. See, when you start really teaching this deeper truth, when folks show enough get delivered, show enough get delivered. Yeah, yeah. He, well, you, you, you can all but look for it, but now I get you one that know how to pray instead of me praying, because I don't mind teaching the truth, because I know it kind of come along with it. He going to try to hit you. Yeah, he, oh, okay, so you're going to expose me. I got you. Yeah, yeah that's right, Doctor. See, so, so in this game, you pick up all these other characters, and before you know it, even in your natural life, some of the stuff, these characters that you took on, why? Because the spirit got transferred in you. Yeah, yeah. Because you kept calling on it. You kept yeah. calling on it. You kept, you play this game every day. You ain't playing on the internet, send letters. When that game first started, you could send letters and, and play against folks across the country. Yeah. And what happened? We, you have tapped into that spirit realm. And the spirit realm is more real. Look, it's cloudy in here. The spirit realm is more real than this realm we're sitting in right now. Mark chapter 5, I got to go. Demons transfer. Now they ain't going to get on CNN and put that out there. But if they call me, I tell them the truth. Then they go, oh, that's just Bible mumble jumbo. Yeah, okay then. So the devil ain't real. <laughs> All right. What did I say go? Mark chapter 5. Watch this line. Watch this. Mark chapter 5, the latter part of that text, and we're going to close. Go read verse 8, 9, verse 10, and 11. Read all the way down, 9, 8 through 11. Read it, read. Keep reading. And the demons, look, the demons ask Jesus, they know they got to get cast out. So they ask Jesus, don't, don't send us back to hell right now. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing for them. But send us over there in them swine. Yeah. Now what were they doing? See, the Bible says in Ezekiel and Isaiah about how wise the devil is. See, the devil ain't stupid. The devil's highly intelligent, man. He's considerably intelligent. He, he, for the Bible says he's full of wisdom. Full of trickery. Yeah. Yeah. Greatest con that ever lived. Right. Know, know, how, know how strong his game is? He got half the world believing he don't even exist. Yep, that's, right. yep. that's how strong his game is. So they all don't, ain't no devil, ain't no saint, so what, what I can do? I can go around and do whatever I want because you don't think I exist. That's some good game. Now, Doc, that's strong. That big pimping now. Because you don't even think I exist. He say, send us into the swine. Nah, nah. If Jesus would have gave them leeway into the pit of hell, they couldn't exist in that realm no more. They would have had to find another way to get access out of hell. Yeah. What are you saying? Why? Because Jesus took the keys from death and hell from Satan when he ascended on. So the only way they can get out, the ones that ain't loose now, is somebody going to go down there and get them out. So they say, send us into the swine. But Jesus, with wisdom, he knew that when it hit, they're going to run down that gut and drown. But well, when they drown, the pigs die and the spirits had to go back to the hell. Yeah. But nonetheless, they wanted to stay in the swine. See, if the devil can't find a human body, he'll take an animal's body. 
that's, that's why most time you watch Harry Potter and those different movies or read those books or any type of dark stories, the, 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 the villain, the sorcerer, the wizard always have some kind of animal. And the animal is like a vessel. And, and he uses that animal to go see stuff, yeah. go do stuff, but it's just a vessel. Could be a cat, could be an owl, could be a mouse, a rat. See, just like we serious about our stuff, they serious yeah. about what they do. Y'all think it's a game. The reason why some of your lives ain't straight out yet, because some of your ancestors fool around witchcraft. Yeah. And you ain't never went and closed that door and pleaded the blood and cut that stuff off. Yeah. Then every now and then, right now, you still let them take you to places, give you stuff. Better tell them which is leave that junk where it is. Thank you. Don't be bringing that mess up in your house. That's right. Like when I go out the country, people say, bring me something back. You do not want nothing from over in them countries. That's right. Yeah, I know it looked like a nice statue, but over there, that's somebody's God. Yeah. And the witch doctor and the shaman, they done prayed a spirit on it. Yeah, yeah. When you bring that junk home and then everything in your house gone chaotic and crazy, you wondering why. And you still in the church. Well, you, sister so-and-so brought you something from Africa. Send us into the swine. They wanted to stay there so later on if they could get by somebody who wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost and the Word, they can jump right on back in. I'm closing with this, y'all young folk, all this sex you're having. Demons transferred through sex. Especially what y'all call them, toss them up, pass them around, orgies. I mean, you saw the movie 300. All Xerxes was a real, he was a real king, and he parted like that all the time. If you remember when you came in, and when they brought him down there to go see Xerxes, he about seven foot tall. Huh, gold all on his mouth, but all around him he had them freaks. They were just freaking and carrying on and smoking and getting high and freaking and carrying on. That's the devil's activity because he uses sexual inter intercourse to transfer spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why God really wants us to be with one. Because see, when, when two people come together, they come as Oh, y'all don't leave me out here now. Y'all be having some real oneness going on then. And what's ever in that life or in that line, whether it's poverty, perversion, whatever it is, you just received it. It's a giving and a receiving. And that's what the devil does. That's how he does.